So you have joined Marketing Bootcamp. Remax Edge presents uh, Remax Momentum Program Marketing Bootcamp. As always in these classes, I provide a lot of insight, uh, a lot of nuggets. So some of the slides uh, are gonna have a ton of information. Uh, be sure to pay attention to some of the, the, uh, the side notes that I give you throughout the program. So here we go, Marketing Bootcamp. Farming. You know, it's interesting. This is brought up a lot in real estate farming, right? So hopefully you all know what farming is, right? You know, the farmer goes out, they plant a seed, the seed grows, and they get a crop. And just like just like a farmer, we in marketing, there's something called farming in real estate, right? So you concentrate on a specific area. Uh, you plant seeds, right? Whether it's uh, direct mail, store hangers, we're going to cover those in just a, just a bit. You plant seeds and you, and you wait for it to grow, and then you uh, take from the from the crops. So let's talk about smart farm basics, right? So you need lead generation systems working in your business, even when you are not. I'll say that again. You need lead generation systems working in your business even when you are not. If you remember correctly, when I share the journey to a million dollars revenue in, in my business, um, throughout that process, you, if you don't have the cash, you have to raise funds, I call it, as so this way you can get cash to invest into places that even when you're not working, things are working to generate business, right? Because you need to generate business. And that's how you'll grow. So you need lead generation systems working in your business even when you're not. So no, a downward shifting market, a transitional market, as I believe we're going through right now, provides a great opportunity to establish the number one position in a farm area, simply because a lot of agents are either going out of business or are drastically reducing their expenses. Let me read that again. I think it's very important. A downward shifting market provides opportunity to establish the number one position in a farm area simply because a lot of agents are either going out of business or drastically reducing their expenses. Let me just quickly explain that. So if you're going after, let's say, 100 houses in a particular area, and you hope to get listings in that area, and then there was a lot of competition amongst agents during an up market. So, do, so during an up market, people are, are spending money just freely. They're spending money freely. So since they're spending money freely, uh, it's, it's heightened competition because it's hard to break through the noise in order to get the listing. Now today, as the market transitions, people are scared, they're nervous. So they are cutting back on their expenses and reducing marketing. And what will happen is if they haven't even established their market, in that area, they're going to start to slip down and down and down. This is a great opportunity. So what are you going to mail? So remember, we're talking about mailing for now. You mail postcards. It's not about, the, it, guys, it is not about the message. This is from my experience. It's not about the message. It's about the consistency. So eight and eight listing postcards can be mailed in advance to increase conversion rate. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But consistency is key. See, many agents do these just listed cards to like one row of houses. And I get it. We all, including myself, in terms of discipline, um, some, some, other, some have more than others. And what that means is it's like a trick, right? You, you come in, you mail to 500 houses. Uh, you didn't get, it, we, we are the only business that expects if we mail to five, let's call it a dollar per, per mailer. We spent $500. We expect when we mail $500 to make $35,000. Think about that for a second. We're really the only industry that expects that type of return when you invest that type of money, right? Oh, if I mail the business, if I mail the card to someone's house, my smiling face is going to get me the business. And so if I invest 500, I make 35,000. Well, if that was the case, folks, I think we all be out of business and the institutional investors would be here just totally just ripping it apart, right? Because it's not the case. You have to invest and it has to be consistent. It has to be consistent. So let's talk about where to mail. 
This is another one, guys. This I relate mailing to like fishing. Mailing is like fishing. So, you know, you could be excited about a particular area, but imagine this. If you were going to mail to an area, let's start with the facts here. Choose a neighborhood, let's give you some facts. Choose a neighborhood has a potential turnover rate of 5% or greater. So that's total active listings for previous 12 months divided by total number of homes in that neighborhood. Think about this, if people aren't moving and inventory is extremely low, that's like throwing bait out to fish who already ate. They're not hungry anymore. So they're not biting on the message you're sending, like, hey, you want to sell your house? But many agents just look around and, and, and they, they're, they're, they're just like the consumer. It's what they believe they see, and then they're not diving into the data. So start out by looking at potential turnover rate. Then it's also, is it conducive to the average sale price you want to work with? Like, do you want to work with listings that are at, you know, $200,000 price points, $400,000 price points, five hundred. dollars And number three, it's not currently dominated by another agent. So many people, so many people fall into this trap. If one agent or one company is dominating a particular area, don't fall into the trap and try to beat them because it's, it's, it's going to take you longer, especially when you're working – when you're working with a limited budget, when you're just getting started in marketing. So how to mail. Start by sending postcards to all new prospects. Follow the eight and eight with neighborhood pro tape postcards. Consistently add new prospects by reinvesting at least 25% of the funds received from the farm related transactions. It's another fun fact. So what I've noticed over the years of my career that I've watched agents, I've watched colleagues, I've watched agents I've trained, coached, Many agents will invest the 25%. I mean, I'm sorry, invest in the program. They'll see success, but instead of reinvesting it back, they go buy things that don't have a return. Let me explain, right? They, they, they'll buy a new car, they'll buy a new suit, okay? That's not gonna give you the return on investment. Now, obviously, if you have extra income, then of course use that. What I'm saying is if you're not disciplining yourself to reinvest back into the business, it's why your business is, is kind of stagnated a little, a little bit. Right? There's nothing wrong with buying new things that make you feel good, but I'm talking about are you reinvesting back into your practice that's building your business and giving you a positive return on your investment. So make sure you heard what I said. I wasn't saying that you shouldn't buy something new that's going to make you feel good. I said that are you taking at least 25% of the funds that you made from these farm-related transactions and investing back into growing that campaign bigger and bigger and better. So when to mail. Now these are tried and true tactics. This is not, there's no exact science, but you have to start with something because many agents are inconsistent. Many agents don't follow a plan. Many agents don't follow a system. So I would say mail one card per week for eight weeks. Only if additional puns are available, right? So one card per week for eight weeks. Now, the reason why you do that is because why? When you mail to the house that one time, now yes, Remax Edge is a fantastic brand. Uh, Remax is a great brand, it's recognizable, but when you're co-branding, when you're aligning, using to leverage that brand, you're also building your brand. So how much more time do you need to see your brand, okay, consistently? So you're using the brand to get more business, but you want to make sure that you're, you're building your brand as well, the recognition. So you have to start out by, boom, you know what? Mail one, one car per week. Now, using the Remax Edge brand, you may not need all that. Right? Because they see, wow, I've heard this company. I've seen their number one in the marketplace. Boom, I'm going to call this agent, right? So you're using that, that, that beautiful bait to get business, okay? But you want to make sure you're consistent so this way they see your message. That's where many agents fail this process. You know, they have one closing. They do one mail out for one month, and they stop. You're gonna do neighborhood post, update postcards, mail one card per month, forever. M remember what I said at the beginning. When you're starting these campaigns, it has to be consistent. You should be able to measure them and you have to be doing lead, you should be doing lead generation, okay, while you're sleeping. So if you're that, and I'm talking to you, that person that does expires and force by owners, at some point, you're going to get tired. 
And I know, I know plenty of my colleagues, my friends, I know agents that even work within, within our own firm, they, they do extremely well with this. The question is, do they reinvest some of the proceeds of those types of uh, transactions back into, a biz, back into a program that will give them leads ongoing while they're sleeping, while they're not making those phone calls? That's the question I have for you, Mr. or Ms. Mrs. Uh, experience or Ms. Experience agent. Neighborhood update cards. So like plain, so just generic. And what's interesting though, it works. It works. The challenge is many agents want to sit down and kind of be writing a blog of some sort because they heard some marketing company tell them, oh, you should write. The information is the key. While you're writing this beautiful, beautiful message, the agent next to you is sending a postcard once a week and they're being heard because most people don't have the time to read your message. So my, my, my point is this, the less information the card contains, the more likely to be read. But if you're writing this note, like, dear homeowner, uh, I've been in your neighborhood for 25 years. Uh, I, I love dogs. Uh, I like to, uh, you know, go to the cafe down the block. Stop it. They're not reading it, especially if they don't know you. So if you're doing neighborhood update cards, just be very plain, very straightforward. Always mail postcards to your farm area because unsolicited envelopes get, rarely get open. And when you're mailing envelopes to people's houses, I get it. But if, if they're not going to get open, they don't have a return address label of something, they rarely get read. See, from my experience, postcards, even if they're getting trashed, if they get trashed, someone else sees it. Maybe the sanitation worker sees it. Maybe the neighbor sees it. Maybe the tenant in that house sees it. Something. The postcard gets seen. It gives you best return on investment, my personal opinion. It's a personal opinion. Postcards also allow, as I mentioned, postcards also allow other eyes to view the content. Postcards should have consistent professional appearance and be created around your business image.